Hey, good afternoon. It's Monday and we are here to draw again. I had Caden running the phone. He's kind of my cameraman, but he's going to come around and draw with us. So thank you to everybody that's joining us today. Um, I hope you enjoyed your weekend. I know we enjoyed Saturday so much. It was a little cooler, but we got outside and we did a lot of um, yard work. And so I just enjoyed the time we've had together as a family. It's been good. Um, anyways, so welcome back to a new week. We have more news this week of just um, school at home is going to be prolonged for many of us. So um, for all you mamas that are going to be assisting your kids in learning from home. It's not that hard. You can do it. I know sometimes when you have more than one kid, it can be challenging at times, but um, you guys have an advantage from the years when I used to homeschool. Um, you have computers or their lessons, plus you already have the curriculum written out. So at least you're not having to try to figure out exactly what all they need to be doing. The teacher should have that ready for us tomorrow. But anyways, you got this. We can do it. Um, I'm telling you what, a month isn't going to be a huge deal if they don't get exactly the education that the, the public school system need, thinks that they need, just learning how to um, live life together and the things at home are always a good thing to do. So anyways, today we're going to draw a hermit crab and um, we're going to use um, a book a from Eric Carle. Sorry, a little distraction there. From Eric Carl. Um, if you guys have uh, the book that I'm using for our reference drawing today is A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carl. He also did many books, The Grouchy Ladybug, The Hungry Caterpillar. I don't even know all the books because we don't have them all, but I've used them before as art lessons because they are so fun to do. And there's a lot you can do with it. So I am going to teach a, a few different things today along with our um, basic drawing. So we're going to have fun. Um, I also, when we get done, I'll put a link of a video of Eric Carl and how he made the illustrations for his books when we're done. So you can show that to your kids um, and they can go and make a bunch um, more pictures and so anyways, um, so I'm going to jump over to my seat and adjust the camera. And we're going to get started today. Hi, Kaden. Hey. Okay, there's my Eric Carl. Uh, house for Hermit Crab. We tried to get the lighting. Ariana says, hi, Bear. Meaning you, not the dog. The bear dog's outside chasing squirrels. And Kate and I have a squirrel story for you. So um, this is cool. Yesterday or Saturday when we were doing the yard work, um, thankfully we we found the squirrels, uh, baby squirrels. Uh, Kevin was cutting down a tree that was old and rotted. It was very tall, no branches on it. Um, cut it down, and then he was starting to cut it up because we were cleaning up brush to burn, and. Um, thankfully, um, he saw these cause he was using his chainsaw and he got cutting it apart. And then he's like, Hey, Laurie, what is this? And so I looked and there was two baby squirrels in the tree in a nest. They were eyes open. They had fur on them. So cute. Um, so Caden had his first little science lesson of how to rehome baby squirrels. And I did see somebody, if you're in the Kearney area, on the Keeping Kearney Informed page, Kevin said yesterday somebody saw squirrels out of a tree. And I Googled what to do. And, and the article I read was from, um, oh, I can't even think. Just, um, I forget where it's at because I can't think. But anyways, the article I read is that mama squirrels are very, very good at um, taking care of their babies. And it's unlike birds. If you touch baby birds, a lot of times the mamas won't come back and take care of them. But baby squirrels, it's different. They will. They'll find their babies to just put them in a safe place close to where they were at. And so we were able to use another part of the tree and strap it to the tree that they were homed in, the other part of it, and make a new nest for them and put them in there and put a nice big heavy 
log lid on top so nothing could get to them. And then Caden went and checked on them yesterday and he said that they were gone, which that's a good thing. That means mama found them and moved them to her new nest form. So anyways, that was neat to see and it was kind of fun to do that. And they were so cute. Okay, so now it's gonna break my heart even more if I ever hit a score with my car. I'm the one that tries to avoid that, so. Okay, we are gonna get started today. And this is our book that we're gonna use our reference photo from. This is fun, this is fun to watercolor. It's fun to um, also, and I'll, we'll see what we do with this, but you can also um, make collages. So let me just show you a couple pages in this book. So, and I just did this recently with my kids that I teach art to. So when you watch the video, or if you watch the video, Eric Carl makes his pages and all his art from cut out pages that are painted and he uses a probably a heavy tissue paper. I was looking at tissue paper. Some of it's pretty thin, but if you, um, a heavier tissue paper, he paints acrylic on it and just uses, makes all these drawers of all these colors. And then he uses things like this. He, you know, use something to go through it to make texture in it. And look, this is like splattered paint. The fish would be cut out. The hermit crab would be cut out. So there's just a lot of things that he does. Starfish or pieces of cut out blue paper. So many things you can do. So we'll talk more about that. But first, let's get busy drawing the hermit crab. So. I have my little bit heavier than copy paper paper, which is if all you have is copy paper, it's fine. If you're using a Sharpie, make sure you got something underneath it so it doesn't bleed through on something that you don't want it to. I have my Sharpie. Dollar General's still open. You can still get Sharpies. I did see Michael's is still doing curbside pickup. So if you need art supplies from Michael's, you can order online and they'll bring it out to your car when you go get it. So. I don't know how long, um, if that will always be like that, but for right now, you can get stuff. So we're going to draw our hermit crab. And maybe right now, I'm sure your kids, I don't know, Caden's probably kind of ready to go back to school, are you? Are you feeling like a hermit crab? Like you're living like a hermit in a, in a shell and you just want to get out to the world? Well, eventually, we're going to get too big for our homes and we're going to have to find a bigger bigger shell to live in. That's what hermit crab thinks. So he, that's what this whole story about. He's getting too big for his shell and he has to go find a new home because that's what hermit crabs do. They grow and then they get into a new, um, they find a bigger shell and they move into it. So there's a nice big picture of hermit crab finding his uh, new shell. So we're gonna do two parts to this. Caden, should we draw it like that, where we have a shell and a hermit crab, or do we wanna draw them in his shell? In his shell. Okay, we're gonna draw them in his shell. And then you kids can make more hermit crab, crab pictures. Okay, so we're going to start with, we're gonna start with the opening of the shell. And we're gonna find, remember, we kinda of start in the middle of the paper, so we have plenty of space to paint or draw up and around and all that. So we're, if we think about right where the center of the paper is, where it's kind of the same from all sides, let's just put a dot right there in the center, okay? So we make sure we don't get too far to one end and we run out of drawing space. So going up towards the top right corner, we're going to make a line that goes up there and I'm curving it just a little bit and it's only going about the length of my Sharpie lid, if you're using a Sharpie, okay? So it's not real far up. And it's a little curve. If it's straight, it's fine, okay? So then at the top of that, I'm gonna come down towards this bottom side and I'm just gonna make a little short line. All right, now I'm gonna come from that place where I stopped and I'm gonna curve right back down to where we started. Okay, so that's my opening of my shell. Now, we're gonna go ahead and draw our shell and then we'll put our hermit crab on there. So from the top up here, where we went up to the corner, I'm gonna come towards the top end of my paper and I'm gonna start on that corner, okay? And this is where I wanna go big because my hermit crab needs to have room in it, right? He doesn't wanna to be too cramped yet, but he is gonna be getting crowded. So we're gonna come over and we're gonna curve over to this side 
And you're going to come down and you're just going to come up and I'm making a circle and I'm coming right back up and I'm going to come to the, my dot that I started with. So see, I made a big curve all the way around and it came right up to the dot where I started with. And then we're gonna go beyond that just a little bit, okay? So we're gonna make a big swirl. This is our shell. This is like a conch shell. And I'm gonna swirl in and stop. Okay, this will be fun to watercolor. All right. Hermit crab now. We're going to start with his body and he's coming out of this shell. So in the middle of this opening that we made, this last line, the farthest one outside of your shell, right in the middle of that line is where we're going to start. And we're going to come bring our line, we're going to come right down towards this corner, the bottom right corner, but we're not going to go very far. About the, the tip of your Sharpie if you have or... or your thumb to your first knuckle, whatever you got to kind of give you an idea. We're just gonna come right down like that, make a line. Okay. <clears throat> now, we're gonna, from this corner, or where we stop for that line, we're gonna come in towards his shell. So we have kind of like a little square right there. Okay, now on top of this square shape, sort of square shape, we're gonna make his head. So we're gonna start at the edge of the shell up towards the top and we're gonna make it round and it can be a little bit bigger. I made his head kind of big, but that's okay. So there's his head. Now crabs, their eyes come out of the top of their head. That's kind of funny. So we're just gonna make two lines I don't know what that's called, but that's one eye. So I made a circle, and then I make a black dot in the middle. So there's one of his eyes. And then I'm gonna make another eye coming out this side. So two lines beside each other. Make a circle on top and a circle in the middle. Okay, crabs have, I think crabs have eight legs, but some of his legs are inside the shell. So we're only gonna do, we're gonna do um, his pincher legs, and we're gonna do two of his walking legs, and then we might see a couple more legs underneath. But we're, so we won't show all the legs. Now the legs will be made from rectangles. So we wanna make sure we don't use all this space yet. So we're gonna start with a couple of his little legs that he's walking on. So right down by the shell and off of his body, we're gonna make two straight lines that aren't real far apart. It's like a rectangle. And then I'm gonna make another one. So this is starting out his legs. We're making two legs. So there's for one leg, there's for the other leg. Those are the first two rectangles. Okay, so now we want to start coming back towards this back bottom left corner. So now I'm going to make another rectangle, a little bit longer, just hooked onto that one. They can curve, they don't have to be perfectly straight. And then we'll do this one. Those are crab knees. Did you know crabs have knees? I guess they do. Our crabs have knees. All right, now, one more little section. This is gonna be his feet. This time I'm gonna let the end of it kind of round off instead of it having a, a flat end. And then one more over on this leg, almost like a triangle, okay? Now, if you want a couple more legs to show from behind his shell, you can do another one. It does, I'm just looking at the illustration on the book. It shows a couple legs showing underneath. So I have one coming out there and then one coming out there. So those are four of his legs. Now we're gonna do his big pincher crab legs. Okay. 
All right. Now, these are going to be a little bit bigger. These are his arms. This is what he uses to get his food with. Um, so these are going to be a little bit bigger. So we're going to start with, it's kind of a triangle shape, but it's almost a square shape. So it's not real, um, that it's not real pointed like a triangle. So I'm going to make one line curving out there. And this line, I'm gonna start closer, but I'm gonna go out farther. So that's where it's kind of a triangle shape, but it's not really, it's less there. And then I'm gonna close that in, okay? And then from that shape, now I'm gonna make a square. Right there. The reason they're drawn like this, or were drawn like this, because remember, this, this illustrator and author made his pictures by cutting out pieces of paper. So he had sheets of red painted paper, and he cut these shapes out. He drew his shape on his paper first that he was gonna use, and then he would cut the shapes to fit, almost like puzzle pieces, and glue them on there. So that's why it shows. I mean, they can touch. You don't have to have the gap in there, but I'm just drawing it like he does it. That way you can see the the shapes that make the, the painting or the drawing. All right, pinchers. So we're gonna make curve out that way. So we curved out from our square, and then we're gonna start right in the middle of the bottom of the square. We're gonna curve out again and come to a point. And then on this side, I'm gonna curve in this way, kind of like our parrot beak that we did the other day. So I curved in this way, and then I'm coming on that side of the square, and I curved in that way. There's his pincher. So this is his pincher, that's his pincher, that's open in the middle. Okay, so there's one. All right, so his other leg's kind of behind his head. So we're gonna make another curve, just like we did that one. Curve out. I'm gonna find a spot on the front of his head that we're gonna come off of and we're gonna go out big because we want this to be bigger and we're gonna close that in. Okay, then down here we're gonna make a square again. And we're gonna make his pinchers. So we make a curve and another curve that meets that one, so it's kind of pointed, because they're sharp and pointy. I wouldn't want to get pinched by a crab. I'm gonna curve this way and this way and make it meet. Couple little more things, and then we'll get the paints out and we'll have fun. We may draw some extra things on here to just give a habitat for your crab. Okay couple little pinchers around his mouth. He just has the little pieces. I'm not exactly sure where his mouth is, but I'm just gonna curve a couple little pieces coming out. I don't know. Just to get an idea that he, so it's like two little triangles right there for his mouth. Okay, couple things. And then they have the big old long antennas. They're feelers. So we're gonna take in between his eyes on top of his head, we're gonna make um, these big old long lines. Whoops, my paper moved. Just go to the big old swoops of his little whisker antennas. And they can overlap or whatever. Okay, so there's his little antennas. Okay, a couple more things we'll do before we start painting this guy. Okay, so he's on the ocean floor and we're going to just make the ocean floor line. So we're gonna go across the bottom of this. He's walking along, doing his little thing, looking for his new home. So we're gonna make a wavy line starting here, and we're gonna work our way across. We're gonna stop when we get to his feet. We're gonna make a line in between each foot so we don't go over his feet. Just kind of watching where I left off at the other one and I'm working my way all the way across in between this pincher all the way to the other side. Okay, 
There is not much space on this picture, but I wanna tell you something. After you paint him, if you want, you can paint him and cut him out. If you're gonna do that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about the antennas. You can draw those later, but you could cut your hermit crab out and then you can make a new picture, maybe a bigger piece of paper with all kinds of fun sea stuff on there. So before we paint, I'm gonna show you some other things that you can make. So I'm gonna set hermit crab aside and I'm gonna open the book and I'm gonna show you some other things that you could make for your, for your habitat, for your hermit crab. Let's see, one thing we can do, um, well, let's not do that yet. We'll do seaweed, we're gonna do starfish, um, maybe a sea urchin. Those are just some different things in this story. So let's do a starfish first. A starfish has five legs, okay? So sometimes it's um, hard to draw a star, but I'm gonna show starfish is moving, so they're not always in the perfect star shape. So we're gonna do a starfish by making um, five separate shapes. So think triangle, if you think triangle and long, but then your triangle's not gonna be real straight, it's gonna be just a little wiggly. So if we start with a curve, I want to start right in the middle of my paper, so I'm right in the middle. We start with a little curve, like the end of your thumb, a little curve. Now I'm going to come out and I'm going to make a little bit of a wiggly shape. And I'm going to come from the other side and make a little bit of a wiggly shape and meet those two shapes, okay? Now, I want these to overlap, so not everyone's going to start with a, shape, with a curve on the end. Because the starfish is solid in the middle, right? I'm just trying to show you how to get the legs. So we're gonna go, so that one comes down to the bottom left corner. We're gonna go to the right side. We're gonna make another one. And I'm just connecting it onto this. So I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna curve, and I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna curve. Okay, so that went to the right side. There's two legs for my crab, okay? So now, or not my crab, my starfish. So now I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna go up towards the top of the paper. So I'm gonna wiggle my way up and I'm gonna wiggle my way up and touch that line. So there's two legs, so we need two more because we want five for our starfish. So I think we have one, we have room to go to the left and I'll angle it up just a little bit. And there's that one. And then I can make one going down to the bottom right. I'm gonna wiggle it out and wiggle it out. Okay, so there's a starfish, okay? You can paint them and cut them out or you can do the painted paper, but I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so before I do my seaweed, let me show you if we did a sea urchin. Let's do it small though. Sea urchin's kind of like a prickly tumbleweed in the ocean. So you're just gonna make a lot of spikes. If you wanna paint it, you would leave openings in all your spikes. But if you didn't necessarily wanna paint it, you could just use a lot of lines with your Sharpie. But we can make a lot of spikes like this. And I'm gonna go in between. light Caden at the other side of the table is making me see like double vision. I'm having a hard time seeing what I'm doing here. Can you take your mm. Mm. No, because then it's too blurry. Look at my okay. Yeah, good job. Looks like a sea star kind of. Maybe these could um, I don't know. There's a lot of ocean life that we could do. I think sometime we're going to do a seahorse painting and drawing and a sea turtle drawing. Um, I have another lobster we could do and a crab we could do. Okay, so there's your sea urchin. Okay, so those are the only two. Well, let's see. One other thing you could do. Let's do a fish. Let's see. Is there a simpler fish or they just got one kind of fish in this story? I think it's just one kind of fish. We'll break up. We'll do a fish. And then we're gonna do some seaweed. So our fish, we're gonna come up here, we're gonna make, we're not gonna make this fish really big. 
because we don't, and our starfish is huge, so we don't, I guess we can go up to the top. So I'm gonna make a curve like that. Just a slight curve picture, or picture line. Okay, and then from there, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make an angle that points towards my line. A V, a sideways V. Okay. And then I'm gonna connect the end of that V to the top of the curve and the bottom of the curve. Can you guess what it is? It's your fish mouth. Now we're gonna go ahead and put a circle for an eye and I'm gonna put a circle inside of it for the inside of the eye. All right, so I'm gonna start at the top and make it as long as I want it. I'm gonna curve down and stop. Just a little curve and then I'm gonna go at the bottom and I'm gonna curve up and stop. Okay, we want a fin at the top. We want a couple fins at the bottom. They can be a triangle shape. They can be a rectangle shape. I'm gonna do two of them at the bottom and then as tell as a triangle, you can make it curved a little bit so it's not just a stripe triangle. And then you can put patterns on them if you want. You can stripe as tell. You can put, like we did the parrot, you can put scales. We didn't do scales on the parrot, we did feathers, but you can use the letter U or the letter V to give a pattern that looks like scales on your fish. You can make them touch or you can leave them spaced apart from each other. They're social distancing one another if you want, or you can make them hug each other. But anyways, so there's our fish. All right, last thing, so seaweed. So if we do seaweed, we're just gonna make curvy lines starting at the bottom, and I'm gonna round the end, and I'm gonna come right back down, okay? And you can do as much seaweed as you want. If you come to something, stop and then go to the other side and start again. That way you don't have lines across your picture. But see, I did my starfish first and my other things first. That way I didn't draw my seaweed first and then I would be trying to draw everything on top of everything else and I'd have all these extra lines. But you can make your seaweed wave all the way up. It can stop behind something. And then when you paint it, you can paint all the blues and the greens. I kind of cheated on that one a little bit. I started at the top, but I'm going to make it go down. I got to stop. Now, if you did a big sea urchin, you're going to have to stop. Take your time to go in between all the little prickly prong things here. But I can go all the way across with my seaweed. And then, you ready to watercolor? If you don't have watercolors, you can use crayons, and you can use markers, or you can use color pencil, or we can use acrylic paint or tempera paint and paint any way you want, okay? There's so many ways to do this. But we're gonna get watercolors out. Okay, so there's my ocean scene, which if I had a bigger sheet of paper, I could cut out my hermit crab, or we could tape them together, just whatever you want. But we're gonna paint our Herbert crab because I'm gonna show you some things on that. Let's set this aside. You already started painting, didn't you, Caden? Mm -hmm. Okay, Caden's painting his crab red. I'm gonna show you how to make the crab shell. Be kind of fun. I'm gonna show you a little bit of a painting technique on this. So. We, um, remember we get our paints wet, okay? So I'm getting my brush wet. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start with some black first. And I'm not gonna get a lot of black on my brush. Usually I tell you if you get it really, really wet inside your paint box, the cake really wet, you'll have really dark colors. I don't want my black to be too dark, okay? But I'm gonna just kinda go along, it's pretty dark still, but when it dries, it'll dry a little bit lighter. 
I'm gonna go back over my outline of my shell shape. Okay, I'm just, I just drug my hand through that. See there, you can see where it's a little bit lighter. If you get your brush wet again, you can get your black a little lighter. But I'm going right on my line. I'm letting it, it doesn't have to stay just on one side of that line. I'm going on both sides. Just making an outline. I wanna show you something fun to do with these paints today. Okay, so there's the outline of my shell. Okay, now I'm gonna just pick some different colors, but I'm gonna get inside my shell, I'm gonna just get some places a little wet. I don't, you gotta be careful. If you have, see how it's pulling that black out? If you have um, really thin paper, it's easy to get overdo this and get too much um, too much water on it and your paper gets really soggy. But if you are careful, I've got some purple in here. I don't want to paint all of his shell because shells are white, kind of this kind of shell is. But I'm just letting some of these colors bleed out from the edge. And I'm also just going to use a little water and here, let me show you. I wanna get another color here so we can, let's get some orange. Watch it kind of blend together a little bit. It's not, try not to get it too wet. If you have really thick watercolors, see how those are kind of blending together? But I'm just picking some colors to go around the edges of my shell. You could also dot it. Whoops, too much water there. Let's see. Add dots by the tip of your brush. Give your shell a little texture to it. I have some oranges and some purples in there. I have a little green in there. Blue green. Trying to get some of my colors wet from using the other day. But if you let your little puddles of different colors touch, it's fun to see where they touch and they blend together just a little bit. Don't try to force them to mix up with each other because then they'll just become one color and you'll lose all the extra colors. But you can bring them right up to it and see how they make their own new colors. Okay, I'm also going to just take a little of my brush too much water, I'm gonna dry it off a little bit, and I'm gonna paint basically just with water in the middle. So that way my shell looks more white, but it's not completely white. Get it wet and then dry it off a little bit so it's not dripping. some places if we want along the edge. And then pull that color out. If your paper gets too wet, once you kind of get it on there and you get your colors to do what you want, um, you can also, I'll show you, hang on. Sometimes it's hard for me to even stop when I'm painting. It's like, oh, this is so much fun. I love seeing all these new colors, but let me show you something. If it gets too wet before it really soaks into your paper, just take your paper towel and lay it on there and soak up some of that water. That way it doesn't really soak into your paper and start making your paper fall apart, okay? So I'm gonna go on with my colors though. So I'm painting with a little color and a little bit more water than I have color. Keeping most of my colors that I'm putting on towards the edge along the line that I drew and then using just the water from my brush 
to paint in between. Rinsing it off every time, getting the extra color of paint out so it's not making it too colorful. So my shell still has the look. Hey, yours is looking awesome over there. You guys, if you get your kids doing, you kiddos, you're quiet when you do art. I know, because I've had plenty of classes with kids, and it's amazing when you get you, get you going on this, how quiet you can be as you let yourself get into the world of art. And I hope some of you grown-ups are doing it too. Can you make the comments show on that? I don't know if anybody's oh, yeah. been... On here, I haven't even looked. Is anybody on here? I just see a list of a lot of people watching. Welcome everybody. If you're on here, say something if you're watching. I would like to know, you guys, um, what can help me right now during this time, me being a small business owner? For one, make sure you share this with your friends. At the bottom, there's a share button. You can also do watch parties. But share this with your friends because we're all at home. And so share it with the people that you know that would enjoy if it was just watching it or if they know kids that would um, have fun with doing some art. Please share it. That helps me during this time. It just helps me um, be able to reach more people. Also, too, when you say something on there, Facebook thinks, oh, well, this lady must be somebody that people like. And so that helps me as well. So those are ways you can help continue my business growing so when this is all done that I can just kind of have a good reach with people um, and be able to continue on with my paint parties and all the things that I normally do. So that would bless me tremendously. It blesses me so much that you're even here watching this. I hope it's something that you're benefiting from and your kids are. Um, but anyway, so tell me where you're from. Tell me what ages you have of kids watching. Please share their pictures when you're done. You can, you can, um, take a picture of their, um, drawing or their painting and, and add it in the comments so we can all see you. It's fun. Something I'm going back and doing, and, and that's a little bit too heavy as it's wet. And I took my black again and it makes these cool lines that run out from the edges. Can you see that? Might be kind of shiny, but I just wanted to kind of show you. I'm trying to still keep my spiral shape. I'm gonna dab some of that up because I think it was too thick. Make sure you keep that shape. Remember, you can do little dots and speckles. Okay. Also, if you're watching the replay of this, thank you for that too. I know everybody has different schedules, um, but still, you can still share it because people can see it whenever they get on there. So just... Okay. Some fun textures with watercolor. Thank you, Tara. I'm glad you and your kids are enjoying this. Thanks for saying something. I know I do miss painting with you guys in the studio, but it'll it'll happen again. We'll get out there. I'm hoping May will be back to um, being able to be around one another again like we are used to. In the meantime, we're just going to enjoy our time that we get to be home with one another. So I am painting my crab's body now. And I'm using, in my tray of paint, I have the mixing colors. So I have a red violet and an orange. So I'm mixing those together on the lid. When I put the orange in it, it makes my red for my crab. And I really get my paint wet and get those um, cakes really good and soaked so my colors are way vibrant. I want to 
to show you how to, I'm going to do my ocean floor here in just a minute. My sand with all the goodies in it. There might be sea, sea glass in it or crushed shells, um, just little pieces of things. So my sand's going to have a lot of colors in it. Let me get my crab painted here really quick. Another thing you can do when you do watercolor is if you have a white crayon, it works as a resist. And a, and a resist in art, would all it means is it's going to resist the paint. If you have a white crayon, even though you can see it when very well, you kind of can, but you won't be able to see it very well when you're painting or when you're writing with it. But then when you paint over it, everywhere where you put your white crayon, it, the paint won't stick to it. And so it leaves unpainted areas called resist. So you can make some fun textures. Um, we do have what? Yeah, I have to whisper. We do it. They're out in the studio in Caitlin's car if you want to. Caden's going to run and go get a white crayon. Or oh, there might be Caden. Is there crayons in this bottom drawer here? I know there's art stuff in there. I can't remember if there are crayons down in that bottom drawer. Very bottom. Very bottom drawer. Because I keep some art stuff handy in the house. Nope. Okay, then go out and look outside. And I'll paint my beach water. In the meantime, I'm going to show your crab picture to everybody. Look at Caden's. Look at his shell. Isn't that cool? So there's Caden's picture. Look at his seaweed, and he's got some other coral growing there. He's got his little starfish down here, and his sea urchin, and his fish swimming by. So we should see a lot of fun um, habitats for our hermit crabs today. Tomorrow, um, Caitlin, my granddaughter, should be back. Not sure yet what the plans, what their plans are, but even if she's not, we're still going to do this. But I'm hoping she is, and she'll join us tomorrow. We're going. She's wanting to paint a un or draw a unicorn. So I'm hoping she'll be back for that next week, or not next week tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow, and we're going to do that. So. I'm going to just put a couple little black areas in my red while it's still wet and just let that give a little more things going on in this. Not a lot. And because my red is wet, it just spreads through. Spreads through my other red. You can make little stripes in it. Just do whatever kind of textures you want. Did you find one? Got two. You got two? Okay. So white crayon. Do you want this one? It don't matter. No, it's fine. So with your white crayon, let me get some of this paper off. Here, use this one. Here, okay. I'll let you have it back. So you won't be able to see this, but let's see. If we want to do, say it's, say it, we're down in the deep part of the ocean and there's like little particles of light, or even if you were doing um, the sky, you do stars. So I'm just going to do little light circles, or you can make patterns. I just have a few, I won't do too many, but you can't see it yet, but watch this. And push hard, make sure you get it on there good. The table's rattling. Okay, that's all I'll put, you can use that one now. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my paper this way so I can paint the water, and you'll see. So whatever color you want for the water, if it's deep, dark down in the ocean, I'm going to use, if I did, a really dark blue. 
you can see. But it could be like right at the surface. It could be. Now my blue, I made a liar out of me. I know this works when it dries. It painted right over my... Here, I need a bigger brush that helps. I know, but when I go back over it, then it's there. Okay, if I take and dab this, well, anyways, all right, guys. You can see where, like right there, it's not painting over this. But if I keep trying to go over it, it may, but when it dries, I think it dries different. Some other ways you can make texture is adding a little salt on top. You want to get some salt, Caden? We could do that too. You won't really see that till it's dry. But you can see where I put. I'll see, like I pushed down. So I know, you probably did better pushing down. I didn't probably push down a hand. You can see where it's not painting. Another thing is putting salt on your wet paint, when it dries, it leaves a really cool texture too. That might be good in your sand. You can do lines through your water. You can make it look like water um, waves by just taking white crayon and going across with, um, with wiggly lines. This is where it takes a little time to go around your stuff that you drew. So you just go slow when you're going around it. And as long as that crab is already dry, the paint's dry, the paints won't blend together. Now, if your crab was still really wet and then you're painting purple or whatever color right up next to it for the water, and then the two wet places touch, so you can see my dots more now that I'm going along here but if the if you touch two wet places of watercolor they're going to blend together so if you don't want it to blend with the stuff you just painted you want to make sure that it's dry but when you're doing just paint slow in between got to paint between his legs this little pincher here I can't wait to see everybody else's pictures. I hope you share it with us. Okay, so there's that. And now I'm gonna do, before I put salt, I'm gonna use salt for the water, but I'm also, or for the sand, I mean. First, I'm gonna just get it wet, okay? I'm just gonna get all my, sand which see where I got wet touching wet which that's fine that water is spreading right down in there it just makes some cool things that watercolor does sometimes it's not cool when you didn't want your colors to go there but what is something you can do remember you can take your paper towel and you can absorb up some of the water and before it dries, that'll take that color off if you didn't want it there. Two, if your, if your paper dries too quick, then this won't work. So you gotta have enough water. You don't want too much that your paper's falling apart. Okay, now I'm gonna do my sand by just adding drops of color and letting them spread out. Isn't that cool? I'm using like a pink color. And I'm gonna make some green, because we like green, with my yellow and blue. Got my yellow yet today, so I gotta get it wet. So 
So lots of dots all in where I, my paper was wet. So it's making those dots just spread out and do their thing here. And then um, let's add one more color, just a little bit. I'm gonna do just a little bit of my bright blue. I don't want all of my paper to be painted down here. It's starting to look like Easter now. But it's doing some cool things. And then I'm gonna sprinkle it with salt, but you won't see that. You'll have to find out what that does on your own. Whoops, hang on. I saw somewhere that I need some color. I'm still doing it, Dad. We're still working on it. Oh, you're still on? I'm still on. Oh, okay. Not quite done. All right. So now I'm doing some salt on here, and we'll see when that dries what the well, texture does. In there so you could just, oh, I'm sorry. That works. So you could just sprinkle it on there. That'll work. So what that salt does is it absorbs up. It absorbs up the water and it'll leave little um, neat little textures and patterns in your sand. So we're gonna let that dry. Okay, so today we're gonna um, wind down here. Are you are you about done with yours? You got a little bit more. So there's this one that we can paint too. So I'm not gonna go through painting all that one with you, but there it is to draw. And like I said, you can, um, make a bigger piece of paper and you can cut these shapes out and you can glue them on top of um, background paper. I don't think I'm gonna get acrylic out today, but if you had a, a paper that you can use acrylic paint on, you could also use that. We've done some acrylic and we painted backgrounds. You could also paint that on a heavier paper and use that for your background or use that for collage paper to cut out and glue. So there's a lot of things you can do with that. But today we just drew the crab, um, did some watercolor and drew some other sea life shapes that you can use for your um, habitat for your hermit crab. So anyways, hope you guys have a great afternoon um, and I will be back tomorrow at one o'clock. Hopefully Caitlin will be able to join us tomorrow. We're gonna do a unicorn tomorrow and Wednesday, we're going to do a mermaid. And Thursday, I think we were going to do a rocket ship. And Friday, we're going to do a castle. So anyways, or if your boy's doing it, maybe a fort or something. We're going to build some sort of a structure that will be fun to for your imagination to add stuff to. So anyways, you guys have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to share this. And I will see you tomorrow.